we know. Federal investigators are on the scene of this helicopter crash deadly in Southern California. We're hoping to get and we're waiting for an update from the NTSB in an hour. That crash, of course, killed Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven others. Investigators are looking for any clues that could explain why that helicopter went down. Investigators say the pilot was in contact with the air traffic controllers just before the crash, but so far there is no word the pilot made any kind of distress call. Transportation reporter Pete Montine is a pilot and flight instructor. Pete, you've been watching this closely since it first broke. Let's, let's give people some perspective. This helicopter was going about the distance between D.C. and Baltimore, right? right? 45 minutes or so, mm -hmm. give or take, if they had driven. Mm -hmm. But they wanted to fly, and it was foggy. How difficult is it for a pilot to navigate those elements? Well, it's a difficult flight to do just in general, and especially in a helicopter that was flying low, skirting the bottom of a cloud deck. We know that the flight visibility was very poor, reported at maybe two and a half miles of visibility, but oftentimes the reported visibility is not what's in the real world, and so it may have been actually even worse out there flying. Um, so it's a very tricky situation. When you think about the speed of a helicopter, this is a fast helicopter, 160 miles an hour. Very fast. And two and a half miles of forward visibility, you only have about a minute to react mm. to a power line or a TV tower or a cell phone tower, or in this case, the side of a mountain. It's very hard. And so you could be up on it before mm -hmm. you can even react to That's it, is exactly what you're right. saying. Yeah, and, and in helicopter flying, you know, helicopter pilots pride themselves on the ability to get in and out of tight situations and to be able to stop and hover. This helicopter never really slowed down according to the flight data that we've seen that's publicly available now from FlightAware and other websites. That's something that, that investigators, the NTSB, are really going to zero in on. I think weather is the single biggest factor in this accident, and we will probably hear that from NTSB investigators when they give us this update in about an hour. You've been in the air for a lot of years mm -hmm. and you've logged a lot of hours. Mm -hmm. Given what we know about these circumstances, if you were the pilot, would you have taken off? No, I think you would have to have to say no. It's a difficult position as a pilot for hire to be mm -hmm. put in. This is a single pilot, no co-pilot. It was a charter flight. You have a high-powered person in the back and his family. Mm -hmm. Don't want to disappoint them. But you have to question in some ways, this was a, a, a charter company and they have a, a, an op spec, a, a, a terms of, of an agreement with the FAA sure. that says we won't fly in poor conditions. Um, so, and you also have an ethical duty too to say to someone, you know, we just should not fly today. Do Maybe no you should harm. take a car uh, do service. Do no harm. Right, exactly. And so um, there's a bit of a rub there. And so, so not to admonish the debt, but, but you have to ask, was there proper judgment that took place in this instance. You know, pilots for generations have been taught from the get-go, almost lesson one and two, to make good judgment mm -hmm. and then not to skirt below clouds and in, in deteriorating weather conditions. Um, so, you know, you, you have to wonder why the helicopter pilot did not climb up into the clouds, into safety. Uh, we know that the helicopter was equipped for it, a well-equipped helicopter. We know that the pilot was able to do it as well. It is just such a breath taking tragedy all the way around. Right. So many lives lost, so many families impacted, mm -hmm. and even those of us who didn't know them feel this loss deeply. Uh, Pete, thank you for your no perspective, problem. and we know you'll be watching that press conference. We'll, of course, be bringing you that information. Uh, the NTSB will be talking to the media around 7 o'clock, so we'll have some updates, hopefully, during the Q&A at 7 o'clock, and, of course, on the news at 11. And now 